Hello everyone and welcome, my name is Simon and we are the Whales of Wall Street. This update is on another of our favourite bags, Engine, ENJ on the exchange. This phenomenal project is one of my favourites all around gaming, NFTs and loads of other cool stuff. If you haven't done so, watch the intro video to this project that we did a few weeks back. I'll leave a link at the end of this video as always for that. A few updates on Engine before we go into the chart. Um, so a couple of items here around the roadmap updates for Q4 2021. And I thought I'd pull out a few other games uh, based on some of these updates, just to give you an indication on what's going on on the engine blockchain and how they are helping gaming platforms go an extra step into engagement, playability and in-game earning as well. So a couple of things to pick out from this latest Q4 2021 roadmap update, which jumps off the back really on our intro video. We did cover a few of these aspects, so it's great to see the continuation and the progress of this project. So things like smart contracts being added to multiple games that are on the platform uh, using via their ERC20 personal owned tokens, which will help including things like the marketplace within these games and the minting mechanics or creating new NFTs and application to the game. So that's really cool. And building bridges to improve the jump net capability. So very much uh, around the affordability and the reduction in fees on that as well. Uh, Beam, which is one of my favorite projects of Engine, um, I did mention in the video that we did for the intro that um, I find this aspect really interesting from the event side. Um, there's loads of applications to this, but I thought my my thoughts process was when I, if I went to maybe a Comic Con or an esports tournament, uh, something like this, you could approach like an exhibition stand that has maybe a QR code, and you could download, for example, some NFTs or things like that, or you know limited edition items via digital capacity. Uh, Beam is very much operating that QR code mentality. So we've already got some big partners, obviously Microsoft being one of those key ones listed there. Um, but it's absolutely phenomenal. Um, and it's already, look at that, it's already contributed to 500,000, over 500,000 blockchain assets. Absolutely incredible. And it's it's not massively long, uh, been out for long. So that's really exciting. And to go into the millions and millions upon each campaign was absolutely brilliant. But I, I, like I said, I can see this happening maybe within like sporting arenas, um, when you're going and watching a football match or something, or watching the TV and a QR code pops up, and maybe there there's a goal to celebrate or an an activity, and you can scan that QR code and immediately get a NFT out of it. And of course, if they're limited edition, then the more rare they are, of course, the more valued they are. So I think that's really cool. A few updates to the uh, wallet as well. Uh, so nothing major, but I think they've just a few developments and improvements um, on that aspect, including the sort of marketplace and NFT capabilities. Uh, that's kind of restructuring that. And then there's a few other elements around the Polkadot system as well, of course, with Infinity um, and some updates on the website as well. So loads of stuff going on with Engine. I thought I'd pull out a couple of games on the basis of that um, interoperability with games and NFT um, minting, etc. So this is allowing within game activity to improve the emphasis of in-game earnings and also to be able to buy and sell within games as well, utilizing NFTs, utilizing smart contracts, really cool stuff. Um, so go and check these games out. Um, obviously SDK as well, very important. Uh, so it's quite a quite a great advancement. I mean, the games themselves are, are quite interesting. I, have, I don't play them, these ones in particular myself. Although Space Misfits look quite fun. Um, this reminds me of a bit like uh, Eve, Eve Online, uh, but maybe a bit more um, cartoony, a bit more avatarish. Uh, so not quite at the level of uh, Eve. Those that don't know what Eve is, by the way, it was an incredible game online with like galaxies and spaceships and stuff. And just go and check out the final war that occurred. Uh, between multiple clans and multi-millions of people across the world combining. Anyway, going off track, it was really cool. But this reminds me a lot of this uh, game here, Misfits. So again, Engine playing a big part of that in the Jump Net Network, uh, helping that play-to-earn model, uh, even so with the tokenomics and the play-to-earn aspect. So really cool stuff going on there. Keep an eye on these games. Uh, and if you are a gamer, 
go check them out go get on them and play those games so let's go into the chart guys uh, now we've covered a few of those items off uh, if I just quickly pull up my engine uh, trading view here we go so hopefully you can see that uh, before we go directly into the information please do make sure if you have not done so already that you like this video if you find it informative subscribe to the channel if you've not done so already and press that notification bell to ensure you get notified of all the awesome updates coming your way so let's do a few observations of this chart um, at the moment of course we've had this bearish momentum downwards especially from that kind of bitcoin nonsense day um, we have kept within the channel which is really positive uh, we drew one previously in previous videos if you remember uh, but i've actually replaced it with this nice beautiful beautiful blue uh, ch uh, <laughs> funnel uh, aspect here so it's great to keep within this area it's kind of like very much on track in that aspect of the top line um off off on this previous uh support level and resistance level in the history um and we're unfortunately still under that kind of like 50 uh, ma point so we really need to start trying to move above that again and still under the 100 ma the uh, macd down here let's get out of the way uh, is still widening so i don't think we're fully over and that's why i've got these potential buy opportunities down here personally uh, from some engine selling that i did up in this region and i wave i, I uh, rode the storm as they say up to this point of course we had the big drop and i was tempted on this and i thought hmm, okay maybe we'll go down to the lower regions but it didn't so that's my fault for missing out on that so uh, we had a couple ones i've already hit this one once um, we did the bit of a rise. I have a bit more of an allocation put back there because I do think we might come and test that area and potentially this area down here, not necessarily down to this bottom with this fib rotation, but the reason I put this one here is we haven't really had many chances of, of support and resistance testing around this region. So we had a lot of bubble effect around here, wave effect, and I do think we may be due to potentially come and test those areas before we see an upside into the beginning of October pushing us back up to try and get near enough up here towards that new all-time high position perhaps towards the end of October so let's see how this goes but for me um, as much as I would love to <laughs> accumulate more engine I'm um, all about the project I would love to see us get this support line uh, we don't it doesn't look like we may get it today but we may we haven't closed yet so we don't know but if we can touch this line and try and get above it maybe for two or three days we can see a bullish momentum push upwards and get that macd closed into a switched position the other element of this is the histogram is showing pale red here this usually is given an indication that the slowing down of selling is occurring okay so that's not necessarily mean that we're going to flip immediately going upwards it means that the slowing down of selling has occurred so the rsi sat at currently 42 for me personally i would like to try to see that between sort of 35 and 40 before i could maybe consider that this is definitely going up that's why i think when if we may go down to this area we may see that this is kind of a good trigger wave point here to suggest that we're very much coming to the end confirmed here as well but i want to see the macd narrow once we see this gap narrow if this starts narrowing over the next two days maybe three then we start knowing that something is occurring in a positive direction. Because for me, as much as I believe in engine, and it's a long-term one for me, as well as short-term, we've got to be realistic here, guys. Like, not everything goes up all the time. Uh, I, I want to point out this area here. So since that big uh, flip over in the 20th of July, we've had 148% increase in growth since that point. The all-time high is still sat up here at $2.78 uh, from, I think, was it April? I think it was April, May, sorry, my bad. Um, and since this area around here, we had the drop down of 36% so far. So usually typically what happens after uh, the, the finalization of a top end uh, is you sometimes get between 30 and 60%. Majority of the time it's around 50 to 60. So there is an argument to say that we still have a potential opportunity to perhaps drop down uh, and if we do go up to that sort of 50, it does take us, ironically, near enough to the bottom of that retracement. But I think there's a lot of momentum behind engine that the project's going massive. The roadmap's kicking in fully for this quarter coming up. 
Um, so I think organically it will stop it from going there, irrespective of chart momentum across the board. Of course, it depends on what Bitcoin does as well. But I do anticipate that you know there might be still a bit of room of of reduction here. So let's keep an eye on that. I'll do an update with Engine in a few days' time. But I, I do think that we're sort of in a position of trying to close here. If we can close there, stabilize, we can start moving up. If we don't close um, above this line within the next two, three days, I do anticipate we might come back down to here. So let's review that in a few days time and see what happens. But like I said, bullish momentum moving forward. I truly believe that by mid October um, and certainly towards the end of October, we may be testing this area up here again. So this is very much a short term uh, aspect of the chart in terms of a potent partial correction to be honest even without the bitcoin scenario i think we were overdue this anyway because this is a phenomenal run and there wasn't gigantic amounts of profit taking uh, a couple of elements of step downs along the way but nothing significant to it to sort of take that point so low under one dollar taking it all the way up here to over two dollars um you yeah, know it makes sense for people at that sort of double your money kind of aspect to be taking some anyway so it was overdue i think it's helped the uh, market in general for us to correct be become more healthy and more in line get us back up to here in the coming weeks and engine will start flying and who knows what it will be some people are showing out ridiculous numbers but i do generally believe that we can get to maybe seven seven to nine possibly 10 but certainly around seven dollars is is a, a key target for us in this bull run for engine what do you think let us know in the comments below what your price prediction is for 2021 slash 2022 as this run concludes perhaps towards the end of the year into the next year let us know what you think and let us know if you're holding engine as well we massively appreciate the uh, feedback and the comments so guys we'll wrap up there thank you so much for watching and we will see you in the next engine update. Take care and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.